Okay, so let's recap the main takeaways from my research. So this study was the first survey of thrip species we conducted on Ontario greenhouses in 30 years. And we found that onion thrips are prevalent throughout the Niagara region. And we found them, have found them in multiple species of ornamental crops. In general, Western flower thrips are still the dominant pest species and onion thrips make up about 30%. Observationally, higher proportions of, of onion thrips are usually associated with more severe thrips damage. Sarah and I developed a simplified thrips key that growers and consultants can use to ID their own thrips. Knowing which thrip species you have can help you determine the best IPM strategy, track changes in the thrips populations over time, and being able to ID thrip species also helps growers intercept invasive species early so they can take action sooner rather than later to prevent them from establishing in their greenhouse. When it comes to infestation sources, my data suggests that most Western flower thrips and definitely onion thrips are coming from outside. Large populations of Western flower thrips in the landscape indicates that they are now able to overwinter in Niagara, which was not the case 30 years ago. We confirmed that the thrips found on chrysanthemum cuttings were Western flower thrips and didn't find any onion thrips coming in from this source. Peak thrips pressure for both species is in July and August. Western flower thrips pressure declined with the outdoor populations, but onion thrips persisted in uh, long after the outside pressure tapered off. Mass trapping is a really simple tool that you can use to reduce how many of these invading thrips make it to your crop. Our research confirms that both onion thrips and Western flower thrips prefer yellow cards in general over blue cards in this region. In my laboratory trials, predatory mites and aureus insidiosus all ate many more, or sorry, as many or more onion thrips compared to Western flower thrips. And this was true whether they were offered one thrip species at a time or given a choice between the two. I also found that onion thrips and Western flower thrips are equal, equally susceptible to botanogard. Similarly, when comparing the efficacy of three different entomopathogenic nematode species, I found that they all worked at least as well for onion thrips as Western flower thrips, if not better. Steiner Nema feltier, which is most commonly used for thrips, performed poorly against Western flower thrips in my trials, the reasons of which aren't entirely clear. The other species tested, Steiner Nema carpocapsae and Heterorhabditis bacteriophora, worked much better for Western flower thrips, and they were just as effective for onion thrips as feltier was. Until we figure out better biocontrol options, pesticides are what we have to work with to suppress major outbreaks. In lab trials, success in ferrets seem to offer the best balance of efficacy and compatibility with biocontrol. In a commercial case study, ferrets offered suppression of onion thrips, reducing populations by 50% after two sprays. However, the Western flower thrips population in this greenhouse was not affected. Before you decide to spray, you should identify your thrip species and determine the relative proportions. As a general rule, if you have more than 50% onion thrips, you probably want to spray to avoid excessive damage. Although onion thrips appear to be more susceptible for now, onion thrips also have a documented history of resistance to many different pesticides. So the efficacy data here might not reflect the way that your population will respond. The susceptibility of thrips within your greenhouse um, can also change over time. And so for this reason, you want to do standardized plant taps before and after spraying to make sure that the products are actually working as well as you expect them to. Okay, so back to this flow chart of how we test pest management tools. Biocontrol passed the first phase. Everything I tested performed at least as well against onion thrips as it did for Western flower thrips in the lab. So now we need to scale up to cage trials to see if they continue to work once they're used on a crop. My master's project is complete, but we now have funding for a second master's student who will carry on this next phase. And hopefully we can figure out what is the, actually the weak link in our biocontrol strategies. This issue of no one paying attention to thrip species composition isn't just a problem in greenhouse ornamentals in Canada. For such an important pest, there's actually shocking little, shockingly little data of this nature in any crop globally. Um, there's really only a handful of studies 
uh, around the world that have done these kind of surveys that have been published. Um, and we, so we want to expand out this survey to take a look at other greenhouse crops to see if onion thrips are a problem in greenhouse vegetables, greenhouse strawberries, cannabis. Some recent data from the United Kingdom showed that there are a number of non-Western flower thrip species that affect strawberries. And anecdotally, we have found that onion thrips is the primary thrips species in cannabis in Ontario. So these crops might also be benefiting from further research on greenhouse IPM for onion thrips. Beyond the next master's project, a topic that needs a closer look is vent screening. Since most thrips are coming from outside, vent screening would be the most effective way to reduce thrips pressure. Screening is much more commonplace in warmer climates than it is in Canada. Um, but when pe pepper weevil arrived in Leamington, veggie growers began screening their vents and they didn't experience any negative consequences of this, no increase in diseases. Um, but the added bonus is that they noticed that the screens reduced other pests um, such as aphids. So some of the key research needs, um, one of which is to identify the barriers that are preventing ornamental growers from installing screens. There's surprisingly little data on the cost benefit analysis or estimates of the reduction in pest pressure that screening provides. And this is necessary information to determine if the upfront costs are worthwhile for growers. 